to the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian, and this is another edition of Lots to Talk About. And this evening, my guest at 46 years old was watching his life turn from bad to badder, and then all of a sudden, it got good. It got good. He fell in love with nature and watched it turn completely around. Now at 65 years old, he's feeling healthier and better than ever. I wanted to bring him on to chat about what that turn was, what happened, how we figured it out, and how it's going now. And with that, I'd like to welcome two lots to talk about, Ian Clark. How are we doing, Ian? Hey, Brian. Doing uh, better than ever. <laughs> better than ever. At 65. That's uh, that's fantastic. I'm uh I'm right at that 45 years old myself, and I was looking at your profile there, and I saw 46 kind of turned a corner and got better. Um, that sounded interesting to me. So how about you uh, kind of give my audience just a, a quick introduction, who you are, uh, kind of your background, and then we'll get into what was going on and what happened there with your turning point in life. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm living in Canada. I always lived in Canada. So I'm currently east of Toronto. I lived out in Alberta for about 26 years, from 18 years old till I was around 30. Well, how old was I? <laughs> At 38, 44, I moved out of Alberta and came back to Ontario with my wife and seven children. And that was in 2002. And I, I already know what happened. You still you turned the corner when all the kids were gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the kids. Yeah, it was. Well, it wasn't quite that simple. <laughs> our, we still had one of our children was only six years old when I was okay. forty-four. Yeah, we had. Where, her. where in Alberta were you? I got a actually, I got quite a quite a following in Alberta. Okay, well, I lived in Red Deer for okay. about five years, and then I moved to Edmonton in nineteen eighty-one. Lived there till twenty o two. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I've heard Red Deer mentioned in uh, in some chats and conversations I've been with and with those guys. So uh, I'm sure they will know exactly where you're talking about. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, Central Alberta, oil patch. It's, uh, yep. Yep. I worked, I worked in the oil field for 17 years in the service sector on the rigs and also running downhole equipment. So that was a lot of fun, but okay. it was a very very toxic environment and uh, got poisoned pretty heavy from lead. Okay. And that was one of the things that piled up on me, which I didn't even know about oh. until it hit. And had a, um, yeah, it just it was an really interesting impact time because you know, we'd only been in Ontario for a couple of years and I got this big tumor between my legs. And that was, uh, that was the first sign that it was a problem. Then I found out I had some heart disease going on, which they call heart disease, but that's kind of a boring term. It just meant I was all plugged up. And my liver numbers were off the charts in the, in the wrong way. And so there were three things that were happening that were going to terminate me and unless I found out what to do. And all the doctors wanted to do was just regular stuff, you know, stuff that they know how to deal with that, just cutting things out and give me drugs and whatever, you know, therapies that they do for tumors, which we don't even want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kill it. And, Kill it and almost kill Kill the host and then hope the host survives. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I, I had watched my uncles die when I was 20 years old. Both my uncles on my mom's side died two days apart, both of cancer in 1978. And I just, you know, it was like all of a sudden, 26 years later, it was my turn. And I just like, it was crazy because then I thought it was 2004. Surely there must be more information now than the regular old standard stuff that they face, but there wasn't. You know, in the medical world, there's maybe more advanced targeted chemo or things like that or whatever they talk about in that realm. But it, it was a total turnoff because I kept asking questions like, you know, why do I have what I have? You know, what can I do about it otherwise? Is there any other way? Well, there's no other way. And we don't know why you have it. You just have it. And this is very common. And my brother was a medical doctor for 30 years. He had his own clinic with 11 doctors working in it and told me, Thousands of patients come through and they all are genetically predisposed to whatever they're going to do. 
you can, you know, people party their face off and eat out of the dumpster and live till 94. And the other guy juices and eats organic and dies at 35. So that was his approach. He just thought it's all genetics, nothing you can do about it. And I didn't want to accept that because that didn't do me any good. Right. I just, I just woke up one morning in the middle of all that garbage. And, and I just thought, man, there's got to be people on the earth who know what's going on. And they probably, I don't know where they are, but they got to know a natural way for the body to support itself because it can't just, it can't be the only thing. You know, we hear all kinds of different things in different areas online by that point that, you know, there are, are things from India and China and various parts of the world. Europe is more advanced in certain natural healings, Cuba, all these different places. <clears throat> but I didn't know who to look for or how to find them. I just knew they had to exist. Right. And it was one of those, you know, moments where you got nothing left to lose. I had nothing to lose. I'd gone bankrupt in 2004. My my body was, you know, coming apart on me. And I was in a very dangerous situation. We had, you know, seven kids to continue raising. My oldest son was only 19. And, uh, and so, you know, fast forward to today, thankfully I can report that I just turned 65 uh, five days ago. Nice. And I feel better than I did when I was 25. My biological health is better than, than when I was 25. My structural health got compromised because I was injured several times through work and pretty significant injuries. One was my left knee where I couldn't uh, snow ski or water ski <laughs> after 21 years old because I got my knee crushed mm. and it healed and I could walk and run, but I couldn't twist the knee. Oh, okay. It would like a basketball and hurt for a week if I did any twisting. So that it was screwed me up on that. I've learned how to fix that when I was 60 years old. And I learned a natural way to heal it. It totally healed. And then I realized, wow, that's that worked. Didn't cost any money. It, it took some courage to do it all. And then I just started doing the rest of my body starting in 2017. So for the last five and a half years, I've been working on that very successfully. Everything's repaired. My torn rotator cuff on the right shoulder is completely fixed. This shoulder has, was broken in four places and it's, it was all pinned. Pins long gone, but the shoulder was still very compromised. This is all healed so I can do whatever I need with, with this shoulder. And then my right knee was damaged in a snowmobile accident where it wasn't crushed or anything, but it was torn pretty bad. And that all got fixed. So when I found out that you could actually reverse the damage that's caused from getting older. Because we all think, well, you know, when you get old, you get sick or you get the stronger potential of disease or heart disease or high blood pressure or diabetes or, you know, brain malfunctions like Alzheimer's, uh, dementia. That's all standard in society. Everybody knows that, you know, the older people get, that's the way it is. And I found out that to be absolutely not true. That is not the case unless you just don't know what, to, what you're doing or how to manage <laughs> The body right well i mean there wouldn't be any money if we let people know that there was another way <laughs> that's right yeah and, and the controllers of the mass population they get to control that you know even if you were if even if we affected only one million people if you had one million strong who knew the truth that i have now learned about that you're learning about that we all learn about as we go the they still have that's only one eightieth of one percent of the world population, or whatever that population number is that they tell right. us. Right. I don't really care how many people there are. <laughs> yeah, I, I just gotta keep to myself. <laughs> there could be as many as they wanna. Um, so, so you you were at a place where you had nothing to lose, and you're you're kind of searching around. I got a I I uh, I think my network card actually reset on me while you were talking but did you did you mention where you ended up finding um kind of some relief like wh what direction you ended up looking i know you were mentioning um asian countries european countries uh where did you end up finding some help uh, most of the the knowledge came out of europe out of europe yeah and then of course there's smatterings of things from china china's got some really deep history in natural healing that doesn't cost money doesn't require a skilled practitioner india is very similar to that not as much india is more needing the ayurvedic practitioner you know diagnostic herbal remedy thing 
but what I what I did learn is that you know when you don't know what you're doing, you have to get a hold of remedies. Because if you don't get remedies, you don't make it. So I had I was going from remedy to remedy to remedy with all these different moving things happening in my body. And I was able to get the symptoms down so that my body wasn't going to be dead because I had about 36 months to work with from starting at 46. If I didn't do something, I'd be dead by 49. And so I, I found out that if you have time, then you can use that time wisely to extend the time. You know, maybe I get five years. And that's what I was hoping. If I could turn the three years into five years, it made a little breathing room. And so I learned enough during that three years to get at least five years. I couldn't tell you. I only had five years at that point. But I was estimating. And then with the five-year amount of time, I was able to get about 15 years. Now, today, I've got so much time, my body has stopped aging or showing signs of aging, which is all measurable. This is not like because I say so. Right. <laughs> right. In the physical world, you can see what is going on. You can measure a lot of stuff you know, kidney function, heart function, all these different things are measurable. You can also tell if your body's healed structurally because you can't do certain things and now you can do certain things. Right, so, right, yeah. It's all seeing is believing. And, I, you know, I, I would go to health shows. I, I went to uh, a health show in Toronto in 2007. That was a big eye-opener. You know, they had the total health show, and so there were a bunch of people there who I met. I went to California, met a lot of people down there over the years and got really good information. And then it's like information overload. Like you, you have so many health experts, so many professional people, so many gurus, so many advisors. And then you have all the modalities, all the technology, all the protocols. It's like an endless array. It's like drinking from a fire hose. It's like, where do you start with that? And what I where, noticed- where do, you, where do you start? Um, so. Yeah. So say, I mean, you were, you were in pretty rough shape with a bunch of different things. Where, where did you start? Like, what, what do you, uh, when you have this fire hose coming at you of all the different things that you could try that might work, how do you pick one? Yeah, you know, that, that is the multi-million dollar question. <laughs> uh, and, and I did finally find the answer to that. To start with, I didn't have the answer at all. I was just, you know, it's like the first rung in the ladder. You're like, okay. The first rung's expensive and I didn't have money, right? It was bankrupt. I went bankrupt right. in 2004, which was sucked. It was so stupid because I had made a business deal with one of my small companies that I sold. And that put me, the company I sold it to went broke and they, they put me under because I had a royalty agreement with them. Anyway, it was a stupid move. And it was just another thing that I realized I am the problem. I was the problem the entire time. I found out that everything I knew was wrong. Everything I was doing was wrong. And that's why I was ending up in the situation I was in. I couldn't blame anybody. Have you else. seen that? Just one thing real quick. Once you started realizing that with, with your health and did it spiral kind of to your whole life? Like, oh my God, I, I'm pretty sure that everything I know is upside down. Oh, Definitely. Yeah, I, I, we started we started through health kind of opening our eyes to different things. And it was when um, when the doctor prescribed my wife Prilosec because she was having acid reflux issues and she was reading the box after the doctor said, yeah, um, you're probably going to have to take it for the rest of your life. You'll just have to keep taking a little more every so often. And she was reading the, the warning and said, do not take longer than six weeks. Um, <laughs> consult a physician if, if you need to take this longer than six weeks. And her physician is telling her that she's going to have to take it for the rest of her life. We're like, awesome. wait, what? <laughs> well, that's perfect, right? It's like, great. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about the box. Yeah, the box doesn't matter. And the rest of your life, not very long. You'd be dead, dead pretty quick anyway. So, right? No, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened? I just kept going through these iterations. In 2007, I found out about a thing called marine phytoplankton. This is a, a, a nutritional food that comes out of the ocean and is harvested on land in Europe. They've got very sophisticated photobioreactors where they had done a 40-year study and found out these two strains that work really good in the human body. You just take a small amount of it. And it char it's like it's charging up your battery. That's the only way I could, because I'm not a scientist, right? I don't understand the mechanisms at that time of what was going on. 
And we were storing it in 100 times strength ocean water that was purified. And that stabilized this fresh green food. And it, it made a difference. Like people would take it, they would feel it. And there's no stimulus. It wasn't like coffee or something. This is something that, that charges your body up over time. And then you're, it's like you've charged your battery and you, got, you can tap in and do amazing stuff. You can get energy when you need it. You don't need to have caffeine and all that stuff that's not good for you. So, and, you know, and caffeine is just a drug, right? I mean, that's just going to jack you up and give you energy. It's going to make you in a good mood. It's going to release a bunch of dopamine. It's a lot of fun. People don't drink coffee because they're bad people. They drink coffee because <laughs> they love it, right? <clears throat> but the point is it, it taxes you. There are things that are taxing your body. There are things that have a price attached to them down the road. And then there are other things that work even better, make you feel even better, that don't tax you, and they have a reward down the road. So I went, what do I want? I want to find out what's real. So I started telling people about this stuff in Canada. And they're like, yeah, whatever. They're like turning their nose up at it and saying, I'm not interested, too expensive, whatever they were saying. So I went down to California and told some people there. And they were like, hey, what is that stuff? You know, that's amazing. Like, how, how is it that possible? Like, is this stuff legal? Because they, they got really excited. People in California are early adopters, a lot of them, especially yeah. when it comes to stuff. And so they, uh, I just got to say no noise here because there's some noise in the background. Um, the studio is supposed to be nice and quiet. Okay. So now, um, so anyway, they, they got really excited. They go, well, where, where can we get this? I said, well, I can get some. And they go, okay. And I, I thought they would just want some. I went home and they ordered a thousand bottles. They're like, a thousand bottles? We didn't have a company. We didn't, we were in our house. And so I had to fly, I had to fly raw material from Australia to Europe. The Europeans were making the marine phytoplankton. They did the blend. They flew my FedEx, flew my FedEx, the totes to Brampton, Ontario, which is part of the GTA. In the basement of our house, we went down and bought bottles locally, little dropper bottles, got a printer, printed our own labels, put the thousand bottles together, it took us a couple of weeks, and then off we went to California. And we didn't have certification. So you try to ship across the border, it isn't going across the border. Because you know you have to have a company, you gotta be USDA registered, you got all this stuff. Mm -hmm. No insurance, we had nothing. We had no <laughs> out in the States, right? And so the the, then we went, oh, well, I guess we let's try Canada Post. So we shipped it Canada Post, and it went right through. If you ship it by UPS, FedEx, or whatever, it doesn't go. Got to have all this paperwork. Canada Post, it just went right through the border. We're like, okay, Man. that's good. That was good. And so then all of a sudden, another order comes in, and another, and another. And they're depositing the money into our account in the States. We did two point two point. Uh, $8 million in retail. Now, we didn't get $2.8 million. <clears throat> we did $2.8 million in retail sales in the first 24 months out of our basement with no company, no insurance, and no nothing. <laughs> so, Because you, you took a flight down there and asked somebody if they'd like it? <laughs> well, they, I had some with me, and they tried it. And then it sort of spread within this group of, of health enthusiasts in California. We didn't have any marketing. We had no sales department. We had nothing. I just knew these people and they found out about this marine fighter blind from me. I was the one, I was actually protected by the people in Europe because they'd never had it sold for human consumption. Oh, okay. And, and it's all certifiable. So what, then, were, what were they using it for? Uh, they were using, they were doing aquaculture. Okay. They were doing biofuels. They were doing testing on different types of extracts for, uh, for natural healing stuff like you know extracts of it but all you got to do is just eat the stuff and that's all we just put it into a drink and you drink it down in water it tastes kind of ocean flavor all right and it's actually really good some people that don't like ocean stuff they have to kind of put it in juice or something <laughs> but anyway it took right off and and we did and then we went oh wow we better wake up here because this is this could be a very serious you know company we better smarten up so we didn't take the money. We didn't like pull the money to Canada or anything. We just used the money to go and do research and learn more. And that allowed me to travel and get rental cars and, and go to events and those types of things. So we used it all for the research. And that's how it started all. 
And then we ended up setting up a company. We had a couple of different editions of the company. We finally had a, the company we have now was set up in 2014. And we built a, a manufacturing facility inside of a 70,000 square foot building that allowed us to expand and, and grow more as far as being able to produce stuff. And we learned about many different things. So today we have detox products, we have nutritional products, but they're all very definitive. They're not like, you don't see what we have anywhere else. It's very unique stuff. And so we're not like some supplement company that, you know, one of the 100,000 SKUs that are in the health food store. Right. Because most of those are remedies and we're not into remedies. We're into fixing the problem. If you remove the problem, you don't need a remedy. And I had right. to use remedies until I learned how this all worked. Then eventually the remedies just went away. And then you just- So are they some... all, are, is everything carry the phytoplankton based or did you go down further paths? Oh yeah, oh definitely different. Like we have black cumin seed oil. So we import black cumin seeds all certified organic from around the world. And then we press that into an oil and that is an amazing product for dental health, skin health, because you, know, you can put it in your body where you have aches and pains and that dissipates them. You take it internally, helps with your gut health, cleanses your organs. It does a, a number of things. And so that's, that's a very popular product that we have. So we focused in on things like that. We have a detox product that is made of clove, rosemary, and thyme that, that does external healing as well as like your body heals, of course, right? This stuff doesn't, there's no magic potions. But when you right. put things to your body, your body goes, oh, thank you. I can use that. And then it gets stuff out of the way. Uh, this is it's called Solaris. It's in this little bottle here. This little, this little small bottle. It's 10 mils. That lasts a month for me. This is super, super concentrated. Our stuff is like way concentrated. We don't dilute anything. And as most companies would dilute everything, because then they can spread it out and make, you know, millions of bottles of something. We give the full strength in everything we do. So just a few drops of this makes a big difference. And you take it internally for your cellular function. It gets rid of the heavy metals, the fungal infections, and all that garbage that you don't want to have anyway. And then in your mouth, it helps with your dentals. You don't have to get your teeth cleaned. And it helps with your eyes. You dilute it way down and you can spray it in your eyes and it helps your eye health. And it does on skin, like we've had people tell us that it got rid of melanomas. We don't make a claim that it gets rid of melanomas because it just, people who have had that, they use it, it happens to them. I don't know if it's going to happen every time. I don't even know why it works. You know, it doesn't matter to right. me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's more of a, it's more of a word of mouth and uh, proof is in the pudding um, kind of advertising more than anything is, it, it just, it, this is what this person says it's done for them. Like, I'm not making a claim. It did. It just did. That's right. Yeah. They told us they did that. And like two weeks later, it, it went all nasty, like all, all messy over the two week period. Then it dries up and then just peeled it off with no, no scarf. Huh. And one woman I know had had eight of those and all eight of them are gone. Interesting. So, yeah. Um. So did you kind of go down the kind of the, when you're talking about like clove and, and the time and the different, um, the different combinations, did you kind of go down different, um, you were talking European, um, European nations and, um, and Asian, yeah. Asian history, um, uh, kind of look into the, the things that they've used in their natural healing and just kind of piggyback off stuff that's been there for thousands of years that have just kind of been, um, shut down by, uh, Western medicine. Well, you know, you go, you, you go down those rabbit holes. Like you go to China, I was in China, I went to Sri Lanka, went to India a couple of times. And those are deep rabbit holes. I mean, you're, you're going into a realm of very sophisticated, extremely extensive herbal formulations and remedies and practitioners. And, you know, you get your, your, your Oriental Chinese medicine doctors, you've got your pharmacies over there with hundreds of different herbs and they're doing all these special teas and everybody's diagnosed and then treated and they look at your tongue and your pulse and all this very sophisticated stuff is very similar to Western medicine where they're dealing with symptoms and getting, bringing remedies. You know, you get this, you do that. Right. And then, then you go kind of deeper down other rabbit holes where you've got the naturopath world. Well, the naturopath world says, 
we're trying to get to the root cause. We don't want to have all these remedies. We try to get to the root cause. But they, they have never been able to plumb the depths of the root cause. They say they do, but they haven't. And I'll tell you how you can tell. Because the thing that was always perplexing me is I kept standing back and doing analytics. And you look at the population and the, the average age of, a, of, a, of an adult in North America, Europe, Australia, South America is around 77 years old, right in there. You get some blue zones around the world, maybe that average age is 80 or 85 or whatever it is. And people are like, oh, wow, that's the blue zone. And then you get your health conscious population, people who really know that there are natural ways to support the body to stay healthy. They don't do all the poisons. They don't listen to the news. They don't, they don't believe what they're being told. They don't read. They don't do branded products. They have their own gardens. They are meditators. They're, they exercise. They're mindful. They love their neighbors. They treat people with respect. And they live a much better quality lifestyle. And their average age is around 81, 82. So I'm looking at that going, what's up with this? Mainstream 77 and the health conscious are only 81, 82 for real. And I know people who are very health conscious and doing all the right stuff and they're dead at 70. You know, all of a sudden they got leukemia. Three months later, they're dead. It's like, what? That guy was like one of the most knowledgeable people I knew. Right. I don't understand. So, you know, and then they can, can oh, they killed him. Uh, no, they didn't kill him. He just got leukemia and died. So, you know, or maybe they did kill him. I, I don't know. But really average is, you know, he wasn't that influential. So I don't think they're going to be worrying about him too much. His <laughs> name was David Gethoff, actually. He was a very pretty famous guy in his area. He ran the Price Pottinger Association okay. and was a cool guy. And so when I see all this stuff go on, I knew that we were missing, including me, missing the biggest pieces of the puzzle for sure. Something is killing us and we haven't figured it out. So what is it? And so after now it's been 19 years of this journey, right, going into the 20th year shortly, and I have now found out what is actually killing us. Now, it wouldn't do you any good for me to tell you what's killing you if I didn't have the answer to what to do about it. <laughs> right? I, so I suppose. Or I could just worry about uh, what's killing me and not know how to do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I could scare you. <laughs> I could upset you. Uh, but I'm not into that. And I don't like fear-based stuff at all. Uh, and there's certain things that you and I do that we can't stop doing. Number one, we think trillions and quadrillions of thoughts every millisecond. There's like 80,000 measures of thoughts to touch an index finger to a thumb, for example. And we can twiddle our thumbs and fingers all day long and talk as long as we want and do everything automatically. Then you have your subconscious thinking, your unconscious thoughts that are programmed, you know, from our beliefs or whatever they are. And then we have our conscious thinking of what's happening around us in our five senses. So there's a lot of thinking going on. And I found out that I was super programmed. Like, it was ridiculous. All, all of what I thought was right was basically wrong. And everything I thought was wrong was possibly right. So all of those things have been the upside I like, down. I like you said it was possibly right. You realize <laughs> that you never really know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You never know unless you can actually see evidential, evidential stuff show up. Right. So then I knew, I knew in the physical world... Seeing is believing. If I'm going to talk to you about physical health, and I actually have knowledge about this, it has to be experiential knowledge. It can't be theoretical knowledge. A lot of people have theories. A lot of people have clinical trials. A lot of people do this, this, or whatever to try to convince you to believe what they believe. Well, that's stupid. It, it should be mathematical and scientific, correct? Right. Not pseudoscience, not freaking made up clinical trials to sell some drug but actual real mathematics. And so I kept standing back more and more and becoming more observant. Okay, so what's up with this pieces of the puzzle we don't have? For sure we don't have it. So what do we do the most? We think the most. Okay, we got to get our thinking sorted out. So you do that best you can. The next thing you do more than anything else is you breathe 11,000 liters of air a day. Okay, that's a lot of air. The average adult, 11,000 liters a day. And you're not going to stop breathing anytime soon. And then you pump. You're not, you're not going to be around too much longer if you do. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, like you're done in, in like eight minutes. <laughs> so 
then you have uh, then you you uh, pump two thousand gallons of blood a day through six thousand miles of cardiovascular system, six thousand miles, and the, the, of course that's just the microcirculation that you're measuring. I don't know how they measure the nano; they can't. It's probably sixty million miles, but six thousand miles that you can see with a microscope. And then you have, uh, then you consume fluid, and then you eat food, and then you absorb stuff through your skin. So that's the input. Then the output is breathing out and then peeing and crapping and sweating. So there's your output. Now, what I found out in the air we breathe, wherever you are, doesn't matter. In some places are worse than others. But you're breathing nanoparticulate by the quadrillions of nanoparticulates per day. So if you take one liter of air, like in the room I'm sitting here now, I'm in a small town. We're east of Toronto an hour and a half. There's a highway over there. There's crematoriums in the neighborhood. There's rubber dust and brake dust. They're worried about CO2 emissions and climate change, right? Uh, oh, fossil fuels. By the way, there's no such thing as fossil fuels. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> the di dinosaurs. Yeah, right. There's a renewable resource of energy deep within the earth that is endless. And it's yeah. free. It's free. Because by the time you drill the well and get the barrel of oil, because I worked in the oil field for 17 years, that barrel of oil has so much value in it for the plastics industry, for industrial materials that are needed. Forget about the diesel and the gas. That's all free. They make yeah. so much money off the, off the real stuff in that barrel. The, the waste material is the gas and the diesel we burn in our vehicles. It's free. Well, I, I worked for a startup for five years that uh we were pyrolysizing waste plastic back into synthetic crude oil right exactly we we're just we we're just turning it back into a gas and condensing it into the right long carbon chain or uh, hydrocarbon chains to make it a liquid fuel <laughs> right and where did it come from first it came out of the oil well oh yeah oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> Which so, which was probably which was probably drilled deeper than any dinosaur was ever consumed. So um. dinosaurs. I mean, the, <laughs> all they're doing is trying to find out how stupid we are, and they go, "Man, they're stupid." Let's tell them bigger lies. Come on. I was having this conversation the other day with somebody. It was uh, oh, we were talking about um, when they have just stopped trying to hide things we were talking it was the anniversary of one of the sh the big shootings in the united states and it was like okay you know they killed jfk and they kind of had to cover it up because people were kind of smart and there was no like uh you couldn't really watch much so there wasn't a lot of digging into it 9 11 went kind of a little weird um, but some of these some of these shootings that have gone lately, they don't even try anymore. They're just like, as long as we get the headline that it was so and so that did it, it never really even matters what actually happened. And I was like, I think that's a sign that we've just gotten that stupid. They can just tell you whatever. <laughs> it's like and they, they sue. Uh, what's his face for two billion dollars? Right. Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he was he was saying gay frogs and things, I guess. <laughs> well, because you know, of Sandy Hook. Oh yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah, there's yeah. videos of people walking through walls, but he's the crazy guy that uh, that gets sued. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's but, all planned. As far as that's just a plan. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, back to uh, back to uh, telling people what they can believe and the particulates in the air. We're talking particulates in the air. <laughs> okay. Well, they're very real. So you get 10 billion pounds of rubber dust that's released off the tires in the United States alone every year. That's every year. It's not on the road anywhere. It right. spins off at 70 miles an hour. They've measured it up as high as a mile and a half above all the highways with helicopter sampling. And it's a, it's a, a very, very, very bad thing because it's nano, so it goes everywhere. There's no filter that can get it out. It's made of rubber, cotton, plastic, epoxies, resins, metals, and chemicals. And it's a constant flow. It never stops. It's constantly suspended in the air. The wind moves it around wherever, but we're consuming it. Then you get brake dust. Brake dust is the same thing. You don't see piles of brake dust anywhere. But yet the brakes that wear out are massively amount. Larger number of brakes are sold every year. We're breathing that crap. That's just all metals. And then you have your cremated bodies, the crematoriums in every neighborhood. They cremate a human body that was the accumulation 
of millions and hundreds of millions of, of liters of air in its lifetime, sucking in all this particulate matter that killed it. And then they burn it in our neighborhoods. It's like, awesome. Good job. Yeah, off gas all those bodies. You know, 80% of the bodies are cremated now. Yeah. Yeah. So what's with that? And then there's a thousand things in the air that are from industrial and garbage and pollutants. The point is that when you breathe it in, it doesn't come out and it accumulates. Right. right. So you have to get it out. The only way you get it out is by pumping 2,000 gallons of blood a day that continuously renews itself. But it can't renew itself because you don't give the body the raw material to make blood. Nobody knows how to do this. You have to go and get sea salt, sea minerals. That's why our main products work so phenomenally well, because it's the first time in the history of the world that we know of where sea minerals are the core foundation of the products. And when you put the sea minerals in the liquid form into your body, they have to be melted into fluid. You put them into your body, your body kind of goes through this roller coaster thing. You go through the high blood pressure, but the salt doesn't cause high blood pressure. The doctors just tell you it does. No, it doesn't. Because when you do it long enough, the blood uses that those salts to make blood. And you get clean blood every day. After a few months, your body goes, that's new. I'm going to let the old blood go. And you just keep making new blood every day. And the old blood goes and it cleans your entire system out. And it takes a year. And then all that particulate matter you breathed and accumulated, it all goes away. And then when you keep doing it, then what you breathe today leaves today. It comes in, it leaves. Goes the blood system, cleans it out because it's got ahead of the curve. When you don't know to do this and you don't use sea salt in your fluids, you need a fair bit of it, then you just don't know. And then you, your blood gets contaminated more and more and more. You accumulate more and more of these nanoparticulates from what you're breathing until you're dead. You get hardened arteries. You get brain messed up stuff because your brain dehydrates and shrivels. If you live long enough, you get Alzheimer's or dementia. You just got to live long enough. And men, if they live long enough, they get prostate cancer because they don't know that you can keep your prostate perfect by cleaning your blood every day using the sea salts. It's literally this simple. And I have seen it physically show me all this stuff. And my body is in an amazing condition because I, I went through the whole high blood pressure thing. I had, I had athletic blood pressure before I started taking the right amount of salt in my fluid. I was 115 over 65, like an athlete. You know, very proud of my healthy state. You know, after I was so sick at 46, there I was at 64, was 115 over 65, doing great. And as soon as I started doing the salt water a year ago, within a month, my blood pressure was 180 over 120. If I would have gone to the doctor, the doctor, would, which I wouldn't, the doctor would freak out and go, you idiot, what are you doing? What are you, you're doing what with salt? You're taking a pound of salt per month melted in water and you're drinking it every day? That is insane, sir. Don't you know that consuming salt causes high blood pressure? Look at your blood pressure. You're at 115 over 65. Now you're at 180 over 120. You idiot. Stop the salt right now. And I'm going to put you on diuretics. And you're going to take these blood pressure medications called a massively powerful diuretic. We're going to drop your blood volume down in your body so you get back into normal blood pressure. You're insane. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a stroke. You're going to have an aneurysm. You're going to blow up. You can't be at 180 over 120. Well, I didn't go to the doctor, but if I did, I would say, sir, doctor, sir, you don't have a clue. 180 over 120 is normal blood pressure when I'm consuming salt in my water. And within four months of doing that, my blood pressure started to go down and back to normal permanently because all the clean blood, so all the clean blood, I don't know why that's doing that. I didn't, I thought I had everything turned off. Sorry I about that. Bad. Okay. So <clears throat> anyway, I have uh, like 15 minutes till the next, uh, I'm going to podcast at eight o'clock, I think. Eastern. No, no, you're good. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, we can wrap up here in a minute. Yeah. But anyway, so the, the point is, is that I, I knew what was going on. I knew that the clean blood was going to go in and clean out my arteries, the walls. See, the walls of the arteries are muscular. The walls of the veins are the muscles. Even your, your capillaries, the microcirculation is all muscles in the walls. All that stuff you breathe your whole life, by the time I was 64 years old, they were hard. 
but it wasn't showing up because I wasn't producing more clean blood. As soon as I started getting my blood volume up, my blood pressure went up and, and then it, it's, it goes and cleans all that stuff out. How could my blood pressure go to 180 over 120 and then go down to normal levels after the fourth month over the next three months after that if salt caused high blood pressure? Because I was consuming more than ever and my blood pressure normalized. And it's normal for the rest of my life because my cardiovascular system went from an old man, 64-year-old to a 25-year-old cardiovascular system. That's what happened. Right. Interesting. So, so, you, so you started you started the salt treatment at sixty four years old. Correct. What was so? You had taken that journey for the twenty years, um, starting with the the mitoplankton, the phytoplankton. Um, well, that was actually so. That was in twenty oh seven. So the first it took me three years to get to the point of finding out the, okay. the phytoplankton. I did all all this other you know crazy stuff like raw food, vegan, juicing, detoxing, doing all these master cleanses, and did you go that. through all all that fun stuff? The oh, man. before, before you got to the okay, so it wasn't just you just didn't look into uh, into uh, yeah okay I got gotcha. you, and so you kind of w- went down that journey. What why why I might have missed it. You might have mentioned it. What was the what was the catalyst for you to try something new with the salt? What what were you lacking in your progress? Well, I wasn't taking enough. So we had access to the sea minerals the whole time. We have two products. One's called Oceans Live. One's called Trace. Okay. I was told to use X amount. It was not the right amount. We needed a lot more. Okay. So then I found out about the unrefined sea salt, which we're working on a whole project right now to get the top quality, highest volume, cleanest, no microplastics, no heavy metals, you know, and we're doing a special treatment to it so that it activates it because we, everything we do in our company, we have a special way to energetically activate things. Okay. And it's, it's real. I mean, it's all based on magnetism and there's all these different things that you can do to enhance a product tremendously. So it works so much better in the body. So anyway, I, I wasn't taking enough. So a friend of mine who I'd been giving health advice to, and we'd been sharing back and forth, mostly me to, to her because she's 67 years old last year and she got a hold of me and she goes, you know, it's my time, my turn to share something with you. I have found out what my problem was. It started when I was 45 years old. She had got vaginal dryness and mucous membranes had dried up on her. And they said, oh, that's just premenopausal. You know, you've had three children. This is very common. And, you know, you got to get on bioidentical hormones. And they put her on all this natural fast stuff. So nothing worked. Didn't help. She was just as bad as ever. And she found out that if you put sea salt into water and drink it, one teaspoon per liter, one liter per 50 pounds of body weight, that's a quart, right? And you do that consistently, that it hydrates your body. It doesn't dehydrate it, it hydrates it. And she had to stop drinking water altogether. She had to stop taking diuretics, like caffeine's a diuretic, alcohol's a diuretic, nicotine's a diuretic. And those things, they remove fluid out of your system. So people can do those things. They don't do them because they're bad people. They do them because they enjoy the results of caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine, right? Those are three drugs that are very, very potent. And they make you feel good and they release dopamine. And they have a price attached to them, but they don't care because people love to feel good. And they're not going to stop doing that. She had to stop doing that because she she was so dehydrated that it was all, her body was dried up. She said within two months of drinking the salt water, she had the vaginal lubrication of a 21-year-old woman. That's all it was. She was just dehydrated. She had lost her electrolytes to a level that it affected her mucous membranes. And everything came back. She goes, I can't believe it. And a whole bunch of other things were happening. You know, the first month was pretty rough. But then at the end of the second month, all this stuff kicks in. That's why she called me then. And her skin was plumping up. She was looking younger. She had a better glow. She said, my brain functions way better. I, I, okay, I said, I better look into this. So I did. And the way I look into it is by doing it and finding out what happens. <laughs> and I went, I had an enlarged prostate uh, starting at about 60. And within two, three months, actually, a total of three months, the first month and a half, my prostate had gone down small enough that I didn't have any urinary problems anymore. And then within about three months, the libido, which had dropped about 30%, came back fully. It was just a gradual replacement going, and it was not, it's not um, a sexual thing. It is a functional thing. Right. 
and your prostate just doesn't work properly, you've got a problem, you know, and, and you lose your, you lose your stamina, you lose your, you don't lose the drive, you lose the physical capability. And it was about 30% off, which is pretty significant. Right. And that all came back. I was like, really? Drinking the salt water? And, and I, cause I didn't understand why that worked. Then I started finding about the blood cleaning and the, and the more blood and then how that my prostate was jammed up with all kinds of stuff because it couldn't detox. It was right. dehydrated. And when a gland dehydrates, it swells up. When right. a brain dehydrates, it shrinks and shrivels. Like Alzheimer's, a shriveled, dehydrated brain full of metals. That's all it is. Huh. Because people drank water like crazy and didn't use salt. And as they're told by the doctor, drink lots of water and don't, don't have any salt. Um, hey, I uh, I know we got started late. I'm watching my timer up here, but I'm looking at my clock in the corner and I want to give you a couple minutes before your next podcast. But um, so I usually like people give people some time here at the end um, to kind of tell people where to go to find more about uh, what you got going on. I have your link um, activationproducts.com. It's going to be in the video description, in the audio description, but take a minute to tell people what they can find at the website. And then, uh, yeah, the floor is yours until, uh, until you want to sign off. And, uh, and when you're done, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, as far as our company, so we're, we are a direct to consumer company to keep the costs as low as we can, because it, it just costs a lot of, a lot of money for distribution, health food stores. We didn't take that route. And so people can go directly to the website, uh, they can also get discounts. Uh, the most important thing to do is to subscribe to the email list. And we're getting better and better at giving more and more super valuable information to our email subscribers. We're also creating a community, which we have not rolled out yet. So then the people can be in the community and getting all the information they need all the time. It's getting much more definitive. So activationproducts.com is the website. And there's a button there where you can subscribe to the email list. So that's the first step. And then you can find out where the discounts are. There's, there's different, and, and just take their time. Like if they're going to get a product, try one or two things. Okay. I'm putting videos on the website where I'm going to talk, talk about to get the best value. I've been doing these videos for a long time and they're available to certain subscribers. If they buy a product, they get that. But now I'm going to build a library of the exact usefulness of the combination of some of the products. But I like people to start slow because if they start too quick, they don't know exactly what's working. I know that all the products do it, what they need to do. Some of the products have crossovers, like the, the Solaris and the black cumin seed oil are both awesome for dental. Okay. So in the morning, I always switch with the black cumin and then I use the Solaris at night. And you don't have to go get your teeth cleaned ever again. Your gum health, all the gingivitis, all that crap just goes away because you remove all the stuff that causes that. It just, the problem's gone. All the tooth to the jaw strengthening happens because that's weakened by all the bacterial overloads and all these things that people overbrush. They just do too much trying to have good teeth. Plus it makes the pearly whites pearly white doing it correctly. You know, instead of doing tooth whitening, which wrecks the teeth actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just all like eyes, ears, nose, throat. There's all, we, we cover all the bases and we make it as simple as possible. There's also a thing we didn't talk about tonight, which is how to heal all your joints. I have a video being posted actually tonight. It should be up. I'll get the link and I can share that with you. Okay. Yeah, uh, I can add it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's just important. It's really important to understand how you take responsibility for your health. Re once you're willing to take responsibility for yourself and not try to blame anybody or anything else for what's wrong, then that's kind of like the breakthrough. And then we, we provide you the information. We went out and spent $85 million literally in the last nine years to be able to get the right information so that people spend the least amount of time, energy, effort, and money to get the maximum return to get healthy. And they don't have to chase their tail all day long. They're just healthy and that's it. And they just do a few things. They integrate that into the lifestyle and they're good to go. So that's, that's what activation is all about. It's all about getting people away from spending all that time, energy on all these remedies they don't need if they get rid of the problems. And yes, that's it. Perfect. Ian, I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing everything you've learned with us. Uh, I encourage people to head on over to your website, activationproducts.com. Uh, I will have those links in the video and the audio uh, version notes. Uh, I appreciate
appreciate you coming on. I, uh, if you'll hang out for just one second, I'm going to wrap up real quick and we'll get you out of here on time so you can get to your next show. Okay, Brian. Thanks a lot, man. Right. Fun. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. I want to thank Ian for coming on and sharing some time with us and all that knowledge he's gained over the last few years, um, researching uh, different ways to, to get rid of the issue and not just remedy it for a short term. Um, if you enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find it at thelotsproject.com or on Noster, Telegram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Rumble, and Instagram. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcasts, 2.0 Value for Value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great night, guys, and we will catch up with you in the morning. I can see the light I can feel the sun